Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we're here to talk about the finale to Moon Knight. Season 1, I presume there's going to be a season 2 but we're going to that as we talk about the review. I'm going to give my overall thoughts on the entire season uh, and my review um, rating for the season as well. So we're going to talk about episode 6 and then the entire season. So if you haven't checked it out, all 6 episodes are live on Disney Plus now. Spoilers ahead of course, hit that subscribe button. Leave a like and let me know your favorite part from Moon Knight. Enjoy the video. <clears throat> so, I want to say this episode wasn't um, the best episode this season, but I think it's always going to be hard when you come off episode five. Episode five was so hard hitting, built with such great story, and it just kept us uh, on our toes for like 50 minutes. This episode was not only mediocre at best, it was the shortest episode. A finale should be the longest episode. That is my solid opinion. Um, the scene, what I love when, uh, you know, Steve came back into the story very quick. Um, and then when they got into Mark, back into Mark's body, I really loved and sort of predicted this, how they were just going back and forth between each other. Steve Grant is probably the best part of the entire, the entire show. His... You know, Oscar doing the British accent and he, he, his comedy timing and he's the way when uh, I look forward to you seeing these new uh, skill sets we got and he's just there acting like Daredevil and it was brilliant. As Oscar Isaac, you know, he's been phenomenal this season. Episode six was no exception. Um, his speech with Stephen before he came out to life, um, him playing as Stephen Mark was brilliant. Obviously, everyone expected Jake to be a lot more involved in this episode. But I think it was done, again, perfectly. They teased him right at the um, end of the battle where Mark blacked out and then everyone was dead around him and Lydia was free. Uh, Layla was free. I said Lydia. I'm an awful fan. Um, and then um, Arthur was on the floor. I thought that was brilliant. You think, oh, I just could tease it for season two. And then we get back into the crazy place, you know. Uh, I don't, even, I don't know where it technically is. It's like in between his minds and all that sort of stuff. And he, we get another tease of Jake doing the New York accent, which I thought again was like, are we going to get him? Um, and by the way, I will talk about other aspects. I just want to talk about Oscar as its role. Uh, and then you know you get this scene of this mysterious figure with um, Arthur in the um, uh, Men's Institute. Because obviously he's there from what happened to the battle and obviously having the God of inside him. And you're like, you have the God in the back. You have him. And you obviously know it's Oscar in the driving seat. But which variant is he? And it only made sense for Jake to be the one to kill Haro. He turns around. He's speaking in a Polish accent. I don't 100% know that. And he just puts two bullets in him. It had crime mafia vibes. It had such cool vibes. The fact that Oscar was able to deliver three different perfectly well-crafted voices, roles, characters is brilliant. Um, he just turns around, pulls the bullets in and drives off. I thought they executed the introduction to Jake brilliantly. They blended the Steve and Mark dialogue and relationship so well. <clears throat> the biggest surprise for me in this entire episode Layla. Layla becoming, I think I think she became a hippopotamus um, god. And then when she got that outfit and the sort of Wonder Woman style wings out, she, the sort of similar outfit to Wonder Woman that she wore in, I think, 84. Uh, but then the wings uses like bulletproof gun, uh, bulletproof shield. It was terrific. It was a surprise I never expected. No one was talking about the internet. Um, and I thought she delivered incredible. She had incredible build up to this point. Um, obviously, she was shocked to obviously see all those people get slaughtered and murdered by Jake. Um, and, but obviously, Mark not knowing it was Jake. Um, I'm, I'm glad they got us back to Mark Spector's uh, well, Stephen's house. So he is in London. So I'm intrigued to see, you know, where they go from here. Is Mark still in control? 
is Jake just taking the lead on the Haro thing and then going back to Mark? Uh, Kachu claims that obviously Mark is no longer with him, but he's in, he's with Jake. So maybe he has to be Jake to become Moon Knight. Um, it's a lot of questions, a lot of ifs and this, but I do want to throw this out there and say, you know, well, Ethan's not a bad actor, but this was one of the worst villain roles <clears throat> I have seen from the MCU. He was boring and bland. He He just didn't do much for me he had okay dialogue here and there he had a couple of decent moments but other than that he was just awful it might have been Ethan Ethan may have not just he just didn't fit the vibe I don't think just walking around with a scepter for multiple most of the season uh, the only fight he basically takes part in um Layla and Mark are blocking absolutely everything getting the shit kicked out of him and I just thought, I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad they've ended his story. Um, great to see Ethan in the MCU, but again, it didn't work for me. It didn't sell. It didn't resonate with me. And um, I believe they could have done so much better with it. Another scene I do want to point out that was actually atrocious. He walks into the pyramid, the chamber of the gods. All the gods are in front of him, ready to you know use their powers. It's so unrealistic. It doesn't make any sense how he defeated seven gods. Seven gods. It makes no sense. He literally just lifted the staff up and they all just died. These guys are gods. Um, well, the, the avatars are gods, so they have the powers because obviously one was about to conjure something up and then they end up dying. It was just really stupid and shit seed. Um they let themselves down sometimes, MCU, overpowering certain characters just to get their point across. Haru isn't that strong. The Scepter wasn't as strong as Seven Gods put together. If those gods had put all their power together, they would have easily been able to kill him. But because for plot purposes, they have to basically be downgraded. Like Thor has been downgraded multiple times, so other people could beat him. In many ways, I will just say this real quick, Thor can beat anyone in the entire MCU if they put him on Ragnarok level. Um, put him on Ragnarok level, put him on Infinity War level, he's unbeatable, but, you know, just how it has to be. So, overall, I thought it was a good finale. Oscar Isaac never let me down, Layla never let me down, Ethan went against said bland. Uh, I thought the pace in the episode was decent. A couple of bits I was a bit confused about, I still don't really understand the mental asylum scene and what and where that fits in. Um, so maybe we'll get a bit of clarity in the future obviously I spoke about the post credit scene being about Jake and you know Haro's death uh, I hope and pray we obviously get a season 2 I believe there's so much potential here for it to be a Jake lead with Mark and Steve obviously coming in here and there what Layla's role in it will be I don't know where we are at the moment again is quite confusing uh, because obviously they ended up back in Steve's apartment in his bed and he still was tying up to his like, have we gone back in time? It's hard to think what's happened if it's real. Um, they know what's happened is happening. We know they're, they're working together in their mind. Everything is connected, but it's just hard to connect of how long has passed. Why is he still tying his leg to the bed? I hope we get all these answers in season two. Um, I hope we see Moon Knight in the next two, three years at least. Uh, Oscar deserves to be involved in as many roles as possible. I mean, who knows? We may get another post credit scene with Doctor Strange. Uh, we may get a post credit scene uh, in the coming months, you know. Um, I hope Blade gets announced very soon, and maybe that's more next to see Steve Grant pop up. Because I believe it would be more Steve Grant-oriented. Uh, in the British storylines. Obviously, he will go back in between, you know, Jake and Mark. And I'm looking forward to the three of them working together. They may already be working together technically, but again, we don't know how long has passed since he's accepted Jake being in his body. You know, because there's elements where Jake has just come out of nowhere. Mark's been flabbergasted and blacked out and Jake's taken over. But now Jake is fully taken over and we've actually seen scenes of him. So how many times has he done that? How many people has he killed? 
Uh, we obviously know many people have died and it's not been marked technically. It's been at the scenes. But um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see where they go with this. It was, um, I want to talk about the season now. As the season is overall, it knocked out the park. It brought so much freshness, uniqueness to the MCU. It's a show that went above and beyond anything I ever anticipated from it. Um, because, you know, I, Miss Marvel's Miss Marvel's on my mind. You know. That is a show I, I am so excited for because it's high school. She's, you know, I, I love the video game, the Avengers game that came out a couple of years ago because we played as Kamala. And I think to see her come to the big screen, a uh, small screen, is going to be incredible. And that was come to the big screen next year in the Marvels. Um, so for Moon Knight to do what he did and not only do what he did with the characters, to have Oscar have such a phenomenal role is even better. Again, I wish the villain was better. The gods were brilliant. I love the big fight at the end where they were giants. Um but yeah, all my only hopes is we get a season two on oh, and the music. I want to say the music. Um, I can't remember the song, but the, the, one of the last songs that plays in episode six when he wakes up in the bed, that is the best song in the whole thing. The introductions. I love the artwork in the credits. They did a phenomenal job on Moon Knight. Every credit to them. And it's brilliant to see them doing characters that aren't focused as much in the comics. It's always easy to do your Iron Man, your Captain Americas, your Thors, your Hulks, your Guardians, your Avengers, whatever it may be, but to take risks like doing Moon Knight, where there obviously is a fan base, but to do it for people who um, want to get into new heroes, who want to see new characters, is brilliant. That's why I will always support the MCU, because they're keeping the old stuff going like Thor, but they're still keeping the new stuff going like Moon Knight. So, you know, full credit to the whole cast. Obviously, rest in peace to the uh, French stuntman who obviously was one of the main uh, side villains in one of the early seasons. Did a great job. Full credit to him. Just wish we saw him a bit, a bit more. Um, and yeah, that is about it. A I'm going to simply give this a 10 out of 10. The only thing it lets it down from getting to a perfect was Ethan's um, reasoning. But uh, other than that, I'm so happy with this show. So go check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think down below. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a like. And for now, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.